Well, welcome back. It is still the run-up on Plus TV Africa, and I still have as my guest, comrade a rugby Anselm National Youth Leader Labour Party, Aki Olaoye, Public Affairs Analyst, member of the Labour Party, and Mayoke Ilo, Policy Analyst and former governorship aspirant, APC Ogun State. Gentlemen, you're welcome. I also still have with me my virtual co-host, Adebayo Olaoye. Hello, Adebayo. Are you still there? Yeah, All right, well, strong indications have emerged that ahead of the zoning of offices of presiding officers for the National Assembly, crisis looms in the ruling party, the All Progressive Congress, the APC, as calls for the immediate resignation from office by the National Chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu Hayten. According to the rights activist, Adamu's resignation would also be a great opportunity for the All Progressive Congress to assuage the feelings of Christians towards the same faith arrangement of the party in the recently concluded presidential election. Well, Nigerians are not known to resign, especially political office holders. Let me start with you. Do you see him heeding to this call to resign? Well, I wouldn't expect him to. Uh, actually, this is a classic case of a storm in a teacup. The, the party has all this under control. There's, uh, there's the issue of perception. So those people who are clamoring for his resignation, I think I've got it wrong at this stage. They should at least exercise some bit of patience. And I'm sure even the, the leadership itself knows that uh, justice must not only be done, it must be seen to have been done. The Christians are a big uh, demography within the party maybe as much as half. So if for some political expediency and you know, putting merit over where you are from made us to have uh, both the president and the vice as, uh, as Muslims, that doesn't mean that the president elect, as it were, is oblivious of the fact that Christians must be well represented. So that's number the first two, two positions in the country. There's the position of Senate President, there's the position of House of Rep. There are other positions that technically we can be sure that Christians will be represented. Uh, as it were, for Labour Party, for PDP, they had a balancing of the tickets, you know. But people move, the things that move the needle that ultimately made them to decide in favor of one thing or the other vary, you know. Playing tribal politics has not really helped us in this country. Playing religious politics, too, has not really helped us. So if we can uh, uptake or promote competence, maybe character, maybe results-driven administration above most other things, we would be better off. All right, Adebayo, you want to come in here? Yes, um, uh, I would actually still like to stay with Mr. Mario Polito because the, the, in the run-up to the presidential elections, after the uh, candidate of the APC, Ashwa Jogu had chosen his running mate, there was a lot of noise. And the APC uh, fed back to the system, to the public, the information that religion didn't matter. Uh, it was going to be competence. But now we are beginning to see religion wearing its head again in the APC. Uh, and I'm just wondering if the APC is being consistent at all. If religion never mattered when it chose its presidential running mate, should it now matter? And isn't the APC contradicting itself? Yes, to you. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not a contradiction. There are forces within the party. There are interest groups within the party. So this is just a section of the party feeling that their voice have to be heard. It's not, we can't wish it away, the fact that, okay, demographics, people have to be represented. In a country where you have women, you have, you know, I would expect us to, to do better than we have done in the past. Uh, the Buhari administration promised at least 30% representation for women. We've, we've had it worse, and that is not because, uh, it's, it's not an APC problem. It's a Nigerian political system problem. You know, I think this new 10th assembly or whichever assembly it is Ten. going to be, 
is now maybe three senators who are women out of 108. You know, it's not good enough for me. Mm -hmm. I will, if I were the governor or the president, I will be working towards getting something close to 50 50. It's not going to be automatic. But if the desire is there, when there is a will, there is a way. So it's, it, the challenge is not just for APC. The challenge is for all the political parties and political actors. We should try and promote inclusivity, either of religion or of, uh, of ethnicity. People should be represented because you feel more at home when you see that, okay, my person has been represented in this, this thing. Whether that now uh, translates into effective, efficient, productive representation is another matter. So at the end of the day, I think at the top of the pyramid, we should have character and competence. Then a little down the line, we should be able to think, are we representing the parties? Are we representing the various demographics that need to be represented? So we are not speaking from both sides. We are just saying that even if in this particular instance, we have to go in this direction, that doesn't mean that we have lost sight of the fact that other things have to be carried along. So it's not an uh, either or situation. It's a and situation. We can do this. We can balance ethnicity and balance competence when the need arises. Okay. How do you find this drama playing out or about to play out in the uh, APC, uh, especially speaking from the view of an opposition? So I think it's disingenuous uh, on one hand to say that competency, character, you know, in how they pick the two ticket, you know, offices for vice president and president, you know, should overlook religion or perhaps you know, social class or many of the things we look at from a diversity lens and now going into party politics and saying, well, perhaps, oh yeah, let's bring up, let's bring back that you know, need to have representation. Uh, I think APC as a political establishment, as a party that's been around past eight years has become a cancer to Nigeria in terms of how they've led this country, looking at the results for the past eight years, how they conduct elections. I mean, perhaps if the previous president before Buhari uh, did not choose an excellent process, he will not have emerged. So again, as you heard our candidate Peter B say, if you're going to be called excellency, the process must be excellent. I go back to the fact that again, looking at despair and representation across the party, he mentioned three people being women, uh, senators, uh, elect, they're all Labour Party members. Uh, that again shows you that as a political party, looking at you know how we like to project our politics and our preference for diversity and inclusion, again, action matters. Uh, I'm not an APC member, so I can care less who they opt for, uh, you know, religion or perhaps ethnicity, but we're all saying something. As a nation, if we're truly going to forge ahead, if we're truly going to build the best of our democracy, inclusion and diversity must be what we often portray. So the 11-year-old child, the 14-year-old girl, the 18 year old university graduate understands that again when we talk of national character we are not only seeing to do it because we want to play the gallery but we're equally taking a serious approach in making sure that's how we again teach people to be better nigerians so um i wish apc the best but um i would say you know you get more propaganda incompetence inefficiency so what they choose to do in their party structures none of my business all right do we have comrade on now all right, uh, we've lost that connection with Comrade. But um, how do you see, um, because the 10th Assembly will be formed very soon. In fact, June it will be inaugurated. Now the parties are having meetings. APC will be having their meeting today, just as you, your party is planning to have their protest today. But do you see the position of Senate President given to the Southeast as waging? So I think um, the phrase of Nigeria. Yeah, so um, it, it will be unfair to again hand off a consolation prize to a region to perhaps you know appear as though there is this balance and equity being distributed. Nigerians seek competent leaders that again can architect a blueprint or a future that the unborn generation will benefit from. If you look at our candidate here in Lagos, Badi Bob was before we're calling him the new architect of Lagos. We're simply saying, how can we write a future of a Nigeria that works? So, yes, at the point where a Senate president is selected, uh, congrats to all of the senatorial candidates that won, again, truly on the mandate of the people. For those that read their ways into office, their candidates will obviously go to court, as they've said. Uh, but knowing fully well that 
yes, for the time being, somebody is going to occupy that chair as Senate President. I'm truly hoping they pick the best and the brightest. People with ideas, people that have gone to Abuja to write laws, to basically you know, promote bills that advances this nation. Can we then become the country that manufactures? Can we become the country that does not export doctors but becomes a foreign medical tourism destination? So for us, we're truly saying, look, win or lose, whether we're the ones in that chair or not, make sure as you lead the Nigerian people and as you, again, write policies and introduce programs, you're doing it in the best interest of advancing Nigeria. Adebayo, you want to come in? Yes, I would. Um, I was quite in, uh, in, impressed with the analysis that Mr. Uh, Mayopu was making and the follow-up that has come from uh, Mr. Lawi. But if I, if, if I recall correctly, Mr. Mayopu made references to demographics and interest groups uh, within the APC, and he mentioned uh, the, the percentage of participation of women you know, within the party. And I want to throw this question to Mr. Lawi. Um, one of the reasons that have been that has been adduced for the emergence of labor as a as a very strong third force has been the fact that it's provided a platform for young people. And then if you look at the, the also advances argument, you say that if you look at the PDP and if you look at the, the APC, you hardly find young people you know, in the top echelons of the party or even in, in political appointments. Uh, when President Obasanjo was there, we had very young ministers of information, Frank Mweke, Yaku, we had very young people. We've not seen that in a while. Would you say that labor has been able to influence with its emergence, even what is happening in the APC? Are you seeing young people likely to emerge in any leadership positions in the APC, which is obviously most likely going to form the federal government? So, um, I would say this, you, you can't teach an old dog how to play new tricks. Um, you start looking at the competition for party positions within the APC. Um, again, say for their national youth leader, Dio Israel, uh, again, one who's, again, done some of the necessary work from the age of 10, getting himself to where he is today, uh, much kudos to him. Outside of that realm, you would find very uninspiring faces as you look at the APC and how it's built its leadership structure. Uh, going into the next administration, again, uh, if we, again, hopefully come out of court with a judgment, I would hope that Peter O.B. Uh, and my party would uh, be the ones, again, uh, having ministers and a cabinet. But let's even talk about a possible Bala um, Ahmed Tinubu administration. And when you look at a lot of figureheads that were part of his political campaign, the surrogates and perhaps the individuals in his presidential campaign council. It only tells you that the blueprint that we should expect is not one that young people would truly smile at. Yes, you may have surrogates like his son who's, again, who's been on the front lines campaigning vigorously, but you look at Labour Party um, and you see inspiration. You see what the future looks like from the candidates and even the faces behind the obedient movement. Uh, a lot of people are first-timers in politics, never ran for councillorship, never ran for LGA chairman, never even ran for House of Assembly. As a matter of fact, a lot of people who spearheaded this obedient movement in terms of the prominent voices could not even tell you what a ward meeting looked like or where their polling unit was. But again, these new school politicians, as I would call them because, again, they're actively involved in politics, have basically dismantled the political establishment, even look at the Lagos elections and the results that emerge. Even with all the rigging that happened, with all of the suppression and threats and ethnic divisiveness that the APC promoted, they could not still, again, reduce the turnout, giving us the victory. So I'm saying something. Our party, again, speaking the language of the future, saying what are we doing about fintech? How are we opening Nigeria's borders with seeing that Nigeria becomes a tourism destination? Every December, next year in Ghana, $2 billion from Afro Nation. What stops Nigeria from, again, saying Nigeria should be visa-free in December? Let us compete with our next door neighbors. So we're saying, give us smart policies. A lot of young people, the Jackpot Syndrome, every day you go to the airport, I see young people with their certificates, first class, 2-1 degree holders, fleeing this nation. Rather than having a brain drain, can we have a reverse brain drain? So for many of us like me, a diaspora who lived in the U.S. for 17 years, coming back to Nigeria and saying, you know what, home is home, I want to be part of this nation building. We are speaking the language that the next generation can benefit from. So I'm truly hoping the APC can see a lot of things we have done. 
Even talk about politics and how you even promote candidates in office. For the first time in the history of Nigeria, you had ordinary, everyday working class Nigerians supporting political candidates, going out, knocking on doors, printing t shirts. We hold rallies, we don't pay people to show up, we don't mobilize. The word mobilization to us is, is French or even Spanish. So I'm saying, what are we doing differently as a nation? We say that, you know what, whether you're APC or Labour or PDP, Nigeria should work for everybody and we should have inclusiveness, we should have diversity, and simply saying, this country will then become the beacon on the hill on the African continent for where we can become that example. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, well, this is how much we can take because of time. Aki Olao, your public affairs analyst, member of the Labour Party, comrade Iragwe Anslam, national youth leader, Labour Party, and Mayoki Ilo, policy analyst and former governorship aspirant, APC Ogun State, have been our guests today as we took a look at the LP plan nationwide strike against INEC and the call for the resignation of the APC chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu. Of course, my co-host has been Adebayo Olowake, who joined me virtually, as always. Many thanks for watching. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I am Maureen Menongwezigwe. Good day.